you'll likely come into contact with the JavaScript interoperability while building interactive Blazor web apps. As the name of the feature gives away, it allows our Blazor web apps to leverage JavaScript functionality. In an upcoming demo, I'll show you how to call a JavaScript method from Blazor, how to return a value from a JavaScript method to Blazor, how to use a browser API like the navigator.share, and how to import a JavaScript library like prism.js to do syntax highlighting of those code snippets, code blocks, and then even to call Blazor from JavaScript. So we're actually going to invoke a Blazor method triggered by our JavaScript method. And if you're wondering how that can even work, how can our Blazor app or C Sharp code interact with JavaScript code, then I wrote all about that in the role of JavaScript in Blazor, the blog post, which you may have received in your mailbox. If you haven't already, do sign up. By subscribing to the newsletter, you'll also receive the source code of my best NuGet packages, some of which already leverage this JavaScript interop feature. And you'll find the source code of this demo project on Patreon slash GizStupid. So I scaffolded a Blazor web app, that new .NET 8 template, which gives me a server-side project and a client-side project out of the box. The JavaScript interrupt feature is a client-side feature, which means we need to have interactivity enabled. This is not going to work on the Blazor static. So I have a custom JS. Which, in which I put my custom JavaScript code and the prism.js, which is the syntax highlighter, a JavaScript module that I can leverage. I didn't write that one. Uh, and then on the main layout, I added a footer with three components, a highlight button, scroll to top and share button. The highlight button will use the prism.js module. The scroll to top will use my custom JavaScript method. And the share button will use a browser API, the navigator.share. On the homepage, I added some code snippets, like you would see on a technical blog post. And then I had to make sure to uh, put the script tag with the custom JS on the app.razor of the server side project, so underneath the blazor.webjs. So I so running that sample application would give me the following with all of these, all of this code on there. Let's start with the scroll to top. That's the easiest one. It's just going to call a custom JavaScript method. So let's say I'm scroll to the bottom. I do scroll to top. That works. Let's zoom in a bit. And then I see invoked scroll to element, which the JavaScript method logged. logged. The code to scroll to the element or to the top uh, resides in the custom JS as JavaScript code, which gets an element ID. So from a div with an ID, a DOM element, we're getting that element by ID. So now we have an HTML element and then invoke the scroll into view. And here is the log statement that we saw invoked scroll to element. So I made these functions functions and not variables or properties because last time I checked that doesn't get picked up by Blazor. So this notation const scroll to and then a method uh, didn't get picked up. Uh, so let's see what that looks like in the Blazor scroll to top component. So the first button, scroll to top, is the one I call this. I pass down first element ID, which doesn't really exist, but it's scrolling to top, so that's fine for the demo. The scroll to top method simply uses that, well, we inject the JS runtime. Make sure you use that interface for injection. If you simply do this, JS runtime, you might get some uh, errors. Anyway, JS runtime invoke void async. So to invoke a method without any return type, so a void method, then the name of the method function. If this was like a class or a module or something else, you may need to say like custom 
class dot and then the method in there uh, anyway that's the function name and we can pass down parameters so element so that scroll to top button interacts with the dom because it gets an element id with that it um, accesses the dom to get that element the actual element and then it invokes the scroll to um, method on that element so to scroll to the element to the top of the element and that interaction that access to the dom is something that uh, javascript is really good at and blazor WebAssembly or c sharp code cannot do at this time so currently blazor actually relies on javascript to access the dom or to manipulate the dom so even with blazor's data binding that will Let's say we bound the color green to certain uh, label. And now after a button click that needs to turn red, then actually that DOM manipulation has to be communicated from Blazor to JavaScript so that JavaScript updates the DOM. For Blazor to correctly communicate those changes, those things that need to happen. Blazor uh, keeps in, in memory a render tree, that's what it's called. It's kind of a copy of the DOM, a bit like a virtual DOM or a shadow DOM, which React.js uses, for example, which is then compared a bit like the state of the DOM, so to say. The old state of the DOM will then be compared to the new state and the changes will be communicated to the JavaScript, which then uh, applies that to the DOM. If you want to know more about how all of that works under the hood, do check out the blog post I wrote about that. I explain everything from the browser with the browser or layout engine, the JavaScript engine, the WebAssembly support, and how these things can work together. So simply clicking highlight code should do exactly that. Highlight. So what Prism.js did is, like you see, it altered the DOM to uh, apply classes and styling to the HTML document. So not only does it have a lot of cool already built libraries functionality available, but also Blazor heavily relies on JavaScript too. What I did here is I didn't use the script tag to load the Prism.js. I actually um, imported the module using the JS interrupt feature because sometimes you'll want to encapsulate everything that's needed in the component. So then you can put it in a NuGet package or something. You don't want the uh, implementation project to have to add a script tag there and maybe a link tag there and then add some code here and there. Uh, you might, in some cases, just want to have everything grouped together. Let's take a look at the highlight button which has a button on click, it's calling the highlight. The first invoke void async imports the prism.js functionality. After which we can invoke one of the methods, which is highlight all. And that's going to make sure to apply classes and CSS styling to the uh, current HTML. You may think like it's a bit uh, late to only import it once a click. We could also do that on initialized, well not initialized, in the Blazor WebAssembly app you could do that in a setup like I have here, like a um, this is a render auto with a server and a client. You cannot do that because the first, the, either the pre-render uh, version the pre-rendered version of the website is not going to be able to access to tap into that JS runtime so you're gonna get an error your app needs to be up and running in the client on the client side in the browser to leverage the JS runtime let down here I wrapped this so on after render so when the component is actually rendered and then on the first render like this we could also just invoke the import after render and then maybe only on the button click do the highlight or just 
whenever the component loaded as well. So that should work. Let's try it. And then we first saw it without the styling and then the styling kicked in. I'm going to comment that out again so that you can uh, play around with the button or with the on after render, whichever you choose. So what is next is the open share menu, which is going to uh, leverage the browser API. Let's take a look at that. It's the share button. And this does two things. So again, we have a button on click we share. First off, we're going to check whether we actually can use that browser API. So we're going to call a JavaScript method. Again, share, which uh, is going to return a value. That value contains whether the navigator.canShare is present. So if it's undefined or false, uh, then yeah, we can't use that browser API. So if we can't share it, we can actually um, also invoke the window.alert. That's probably a feature, a browser feature that you know. That's that typical pop-up window. Then we have the uh, another browser API, navigator.share, which should open the share menu if we can share. And that's that's um, operating system dependent. So get a share menu from my yeah, desktop browser. I can copy the link or share, send the content over via email or Teams or other apps. And then lastly is the scroll with callback, which is going to invoke a Blazor method after uh, executing the JavaScript code, which scrolls to that element. So it's actually JavaScript invoking a Blazor method, a c -sharp method. This could be especially useful for a something in JavaScript from a library, a method that takes some time and only when it finished, you need the result back into your Blazor app, or you at least need to know that it finished, uh, after which maybe in Blazor you do an HTTP call or you do. So let's take a look at that. It's not something I've needed before, uh, but I do see the use of it. Um, I try to limit uh, the amount of JavaScript code I have in there because we're developing a Blazor web app. But the ability to pass values back to Blazor is actually really useful to limit the amount of JavaScript because let's say we couldn't do that, then we'd had to do that HTTP call in JavaScript, for example. So this method also resides in the custom JS scroll to with the callback, which has that same element ID to scroll to the element. Also logs invoke with the name of the method. And then it does the report back method underneath and passes down a ref, well, reference. We'll take a look at that later. And usually in the Blazor web assembly, we just need to do .net.invoke method then the assembly name so that's the where the uh, method resides the blazor method so that's in the blazor.client then the method name or you can uh, rename that using an attribute we'll see that later and then optionally you'll need to pass that object reference in the blazor web assembly app i don't think you need it uh, in this setup, because we have a server and a client, which both have this yeah, .NET object, it can't distinguish the ref at, I'm going to call this at ref, so this one, and then we pass that uh, reference, element reference to the method, so you can have multiple parameters, element ID, and the reference. Then that reference is used to determine which .NET runtime to use to find this method, to invoke this method below. This is the attribute I talked about, the JS invocable. 
in which you can optionally uh, rename your method. Yeah. If you ever needed that, maybe it needs to be uh, a different casing, snake case. It needs to be a static method and I called it log and blazer, which simply logs a something in the browser. And let's try it if it actually works because, yeah. So I invoked scroll with two with callback and scroll to element since that calls that function. And then in the end, hello from login.blazer, which comes from the Blazor C sharp code. Okay, so that was all for this demo. I also wrote most of the demo in this blog post, JavaScript interrupt with Blazor. If you check that one out, uh, it's most of it is in there. And I'll make sure to publish the source code to Patreon. And of course, you can find more Blazor code examples, uh, things to learn from, to reuse, to build your own brand website. You can find all that on my Patreon, or you can get the Nougat packages for free as well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.